What is up, SVSers? Welcome back to another SVS audio file. Happy hour. We're so happy. Hey. To you. And as always, <laughs> I have my fantastic colleagues with me, as always, Gary Yakubi and our president. Gary, how are you? My palms aren't sweating like yours, Nick. Why are your palms sweating? <laughs> I don't know. Just it's just healthy nerves, I guess. Bef butterflies. You know, we we still uh, you know get our game faces on, but I have to say, I've been looking forward to this. We we almost canceled it because we have, as uh, uh, I'm sure the SBS community knows, we have some promos going on now in our outlet store, and we we thought maybe we shouldn't have mixed messages, but we're too we're too stoked to do this, and so uh, really happy to be here with everybody. And we have an awesome guest and giveaways, which we never want to part ways with that. So, uh, Larry, our most Quirk popular, from... our, our most, our most well received guest from the industry, right? That's right, and that we don't we don't take that lightly because we've had some very good guests. So, uh, super excited, and I'll get we've into had that. Some really poor before. guests too, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we're not gonna throw anyone. I'm button. kidding. Happy I'm totally out. kidding. I'm totally kidding. Uh, and of course, we have our national training manager uh affectionately known as the larry larry how are you this evening i am good sir I'm enjoying some thunderstorms outside right now so it's pretty sweet well i hope you keep your power and i see you're uh, rocking your red and gold there so uh, yeah, clearly you're excited got, for uh, another week in football man so i'm stoked well for anyone who might be tuning in for the very and the, first and time, the commanders are tied for first place right now so you, you that, can that say won't that last for, that won't last long that's right. You brag on that while you can. It's like you said, it's not going to last very long. Um, so for any folks that uh, may be joining us for the first time, we will do four giveaways throughout the course of the evening. Uh, all you have to do to be eligible to win is leave a comment. And I'm seeing some comments flying by now. I think I've seen Kansas, Indiana, Maryland, uh, North Carolina. We'll get to that in a few minutes, uh, as well as New Hampshire, Maine, and and all over the world. So we appreciate everyone from everywhere. And I love seeing the different towns and cities that uh, you're commenting from there so anyone who's left a comment you are eligible for the giveaways and larry what are the giveaways this evening oh, we have four as usual so we're going to kick things off with a pair of prime satellite speakers which are i really don't like calling them satellites sometimes because i think of like little plastic bookshelves but these are nine pound bookshelf speakers and then we have a pb 1000 pro subwoofer that somebody's going to walk away with or actually be shipped to then a prime center three-way speaker to throw up front, and then an SB2000 Pro subwoofer with an ultrasound path subwoofer cable as well. So we've got four great giveaways for you all tonight. Somebody's going to get Did you say two. Prime Satellite Speakers? Is that the first giveaway? It is, sir. Correct. Then let's give them, we should give them a subwoofer with, with them, don't you think? It's oh, a really nice right. 2.1 combination. Do we even have to ask the people that? Do we have to ask that one, or is that a rhetorical question? Let's, let's, um, let's, uh, um, offer uh one of our well how about one of our uh because we're featuring sb1000s in our promo let's let's um uh a pair of prime satellites with an sb1000 not 1000 pro subwoofer from uh brand, not cool you know price. by the way the outlet promo they're totally new um but uh uh just deeply discounted it's our mccheese mcrib <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Vince, hope you're listening there. I, I know you love these curveballs with the giveaways, but uh, our first one will be a 2.1. So uh, what's not to love about that? Um, so before we get into some of the, the recent events that we've been uh, partaking in. And Maybe we should let that one be the one that Rowie gives away. Uh, I think we can manage that. I, I think okay. that's a great idea. Right? So uh, Rowie gets right. to do the 2.1. He, he, uh, he had asked, our special guest tonight is Rowie Hershkovitz. He's the VP at Capitol Records. He's also worked on the Conan O'Brien show. Uh, he's got some cool voice credits that we're going to talk about uh, today <laughs> as well. Uh, but he had, he had asked very nicely if, if he could be uh, the one to delegate one of the giveaways. And, and I thought that was such a sweet gesture on his part. Uh, it's, a, it's a great feeling. So uh, we're, we'll let him do the 2.1. Um, but before we I, get I, into, I things, only get to change things up twice in one broadcast, and now I have to I have to stand down, right? Well, you got one wild card left, so we'll, uh, you okay. know, I think when it involves giveaways, there's there's no arguments here, so okay, um, good. I, I just think it just perks things up. Um, but I I've, I actually would like to go first with the the things that I've been tuning into recently. Uh, before I do, I'm just drinking uh, some cranberry juice. Uh, watered down with uh, with something. Uh, but I, I had a, a very interesting experience watching the uh, Woodstock documentary, the one on Netflix. I, I thought it was uh, far superior to the first one. And I was actually at the Woodstock event where this uh, documentary took place at. Um, and, you know, I thought they did a really good job of capturing why it sort of devolved into that 
fiery uh you know mess that it ultimately turned into um it didn't focus as much on on sort of the anger from the crowd it was for sort of what built that anger um and, and the part that bothered me was that the organizers still sort of take no responsibility whatsoever mm -hmm. uh so it's a great documentary i don't want to get too far into it but everything that i saw there sort of just brought me these crazy flashbacks uh which i didn't get from the first one so um i would have never traded that experience but woodstock 99 was uh was definitely one of the defining moments of my life and uh, i thought that documentary just did a phenomenal job of capturing how i felt in, in ways that i could how never did you feel before. nick how did you feel when you i felt there? angry i felt ripped off you know Tall, like drinking water that was like giving you well, whatever, questionable yeah, uh, yeah. drinking yeah. water and then $12 to buy a new one. And the one time I bought food, it was like on day three and they had these roast beef sandwiches with like pink slime on them. And I took one bite. And I'm like, come on. And this was like a $12 roast beef sandwich on a piece of bread, soggy bread. And I was like, this it's just just not right. Um, yeah, I, I know the original Woodstock, they had the whole food stands and making, you know, peanut butter and jelly for the masses. And it was sort of this communal thing. Totally not that here. Uh, but one thing I would like to say is the attendees were generally good to each other. The people there all felt sort of this shared uh, misery Suffering. and then the music sort of brought us together. So that element of it was, was sort of real and true. Uh, you know, there wasn't a lot of you know, inter uh, attendee fighting or stealing that I actually witnessed, but you know, it was all directed at the organizers in the sort of way that we all just felt ripped off and and undernourished and dehydrated uh, after three and a half half days in the boiling sun in an air force base. So, uh, check it out if you get a chance. I don't want to rant any longer because well, that's not. Did you have a favorite performance of the three days? Like your the band that uh, you remember? I mean, I thought the Red Hot Chili Peppers when they handed out the candles and everything. Like to me, that sort of just defined the entire. Uh, weekend, but I'm not a Limp Biscuit fan, but I will say the energy that and the anger that he brought out of people was also oh, yeah. very compelling as well. Um, and then they did uh, one of the, the uh, Doors original uh, members came out and played with a few sets with a couple bands, which I thought was kind of cool too. So um, there was lots of cool moments. The The rave tent was sort of uh, a little sketchy, but everything else was, uh, <laughs> was, was a lot of fun. Uh, so uh, that was one of them. And then uh, I've been watching Game of Thrones, House of Dragons. We're a big fan of that series here in my family. So uh, that's what I've been tuning into. And uh, and Gary, I guess I'll kick it to you. What do you got for recommendations? Okay, so I also have watched uh, Game of Thrones, uh, House of Dragons. And um, uh, I uh, I have my my reservations about it so far, two episodes in. But no reservations about the... Uh, the fun of watching it in Dolby Atmos in my theater that uh, that to me is really really fun. Uh, I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not saying it, I don't think it was off to the fast start of the original Game of Thrones. It's a little bit boring, but may, you know we'll see. Uh, I'll, I'll certainly watch it. But I did discover something that probably I'm like you know six months late on, so maybe nobody's even going to care. But this um series uh the wheel of time on amazon prime again another one where i thought it's very plot challenged i didn't find myself caring that much about the characters however as a demo it's full-on dolby atmos it's a really really great demo so i'm going to recommend the wheel of time on amazon prime the whole first season is in so you can you can um binge it that was really good and uh, as far as live music, I'm pretty stoked because uh, uh, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, who you referenced, they're coming to D.C. next week. And uh, I know like 30 people that are going. So it's going to be, I think, I, I think a lot of random, just normal people are going because they're excited about this. And um, my family, my sons are uh, uh, both going uh, with my, uh, myself and my wife. So it, we're, it's going to be cool. And then the other uh, interesting show that I have, uh, which is actually the next day, which shows you what a lunatic I am, uh, <laughs> is Roxy Music 50th Anniversary Tour, which um, they're only doing a few dates. But luckily, one of them's in D.C., so I'm going to check that out. That's Very good. For me. How, how can you not mention... Uh... You, you're you're a true Swifty or Swifter. I don't know what they call them, but isn't there a new album on the horizon for uh, T Swift? I am excited. You can make fun of me all you want. I am That's excited like about fun. that. I'm just. It, sounds, I, it looks pretty thing. interesting. Yeah. yeah, it looks interesting. I'm definitely looking forward to it. But it's not coming until October, so I have to keep myself uh, uh, restrained a little bit. Temper expectations. Yeah, yeah, for now. Yep. Uh, Larry, what do you have? Well, uh, we traveled to uh, Raleigh last week, so I had some 
airplane and airport time. I was listening to a lot of new music and uh, watching show. I watched the HBO Woodstock 99 documentary and then the Netflix three episodes. And I, you know, I don't remember that. I remember wanting to go and then I don't remember all the chaos, but it was kind of interesting seeing that. And I watched uh, the awful Uncharted movie with Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg. It was just a bore fest. Um, but I've been listening to some new music and Muse just had a new album release. How is that? I've heard it's about that. Fantastic. I think I've already listened is to it? it three times. It's wow. so good. I might check that out. I, I, I did hear, hear some good things about it. And you need to check out, they've got a song on uh, there called You Make Me Feel Like, I think You Make Me Feel Like Halloween. And it's one of the coolest music videos I have ever seen. It's And I'm a horror nut, so it's pretty snazzy. And then uh, new Billy Idol. He's got a song out called The Cage or Ed, cage whatever and is he still it, alive i didn't realize yeah and he looks good too he looks I'm healthy I'm, and, I'm, uh, sorry. I'm sorry i'm sorry get steve the guitarist with him so uh it's a cool video too it's all shot in like 360 so it's uh pretty cool but billy and billy i did my go-to to. karaoke for a white wedding and so that's that is my go-to karaoke that's a good karaoke i could even do that myself and i'm not yeah. very good at karaoke you don't need to be like tonally balanced you can just sort of yell and it's great yeah um, yeah well, I think those are great recommendations. You were you were talking about horror there, uh, Larry, and, and I thought me and you had a, an interesting. We came across this new trailer for a Winnie the Pooh horror movie. I don't know if people <laughs> know this. But apparently, the yeah. original writers or scripters for Winnie the Pooh uh, lost the uh, what a creative license to it or whatever. So yes. now anyone can In take that time. the likeness. Yeah. Yep. And uh, so there's a Winnie the Pooh horror movie coming call, coming called Blood and Honey. So uh, check out that trailer and then. Before we talk about our events, I did want to ask the uh, SVS community. I have the opportunity to go see. Uh, sorry. Oh, whenever go we ask, Nick, whenever we ask them, it never goes well. It always something goes wrong. Well, but you okay. can't ask a yes or no question. Yeah, I know. Well, I feel like I feel like I already know what they're going to say to this one. But I have the opportunity to go see uh, to ditch my family and go see Ghost and Mastodon at a, a, a local venue here uh, for free. And uh, I've never seen either band live, but I know some of their music. So uh, is it worth seeing a Ghost and Mastodon show live? Uh, I, I all right, let's see what they said. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but I did want to talk about a, a recent event that we did. I know we, we saw a bunch of comments here from folks in North Carolina. And, uh, you know, one of our biggest uh, and best partners are, are out there, Audio Advice. So uh, I wasn't able to go. But Gary, I know you and Larry were there. Uh, maybe give a little uh, thought on what exactly that event was all about and what it meant to us. Well, let me, first of all, shout out to North Carolina, which has always been a wonderful um, supporting place for SVS. And we never had a really um, great representation there in terms of local dealers. And uh, la just before the <laughs> pandemic, which was weird, we uh, uh, came to a, a partnership agreement with Audio Advice. Now, Audio Advice is a very iconic long-standing really out really professional great uh dealer even larry who's been in a million storefronts larry was telling me i was in their uh, their store and i was really really impressed when larry tells you that in many stores as he's been in that tells you something this is a, a really great uh iconic um specialty uh retailer custom integrator and they also do e-commerce um so that partnership we've had to sort of build it virtually and then um finally we get to go to raleigh they did this uh uh i don't i'm not sure what to call it because it's mostly their brands i think there were some brands that weren't their brands but a, a consumer show at a hotel in in downtown raleigh and it was really really fun lots and lots of um enthusiastic passionate audio uh people and also people that i felt maybe were new to it and just were curious um, went really, really well. We we had three separate displays. Larry did an amazing job setting it up. We were in with a front projector with JVC. The JVC chose us to partner with them, and that worked out really, really well. It was a great sounding room. And then we had our own room with a full-on home theater, and then we had a, a two-channel room as well. Really enthusiastic, passionate support. Uh, I was so glad I came there. and the, I, dr I made the mistake of driving, and it was truly a marathon getting <laughs> to there and back because uh, uh people are i guess driving lots right now post pandemic um but it was totally worth it i had a great time and very thankful to audio advice for doing it larry any specific demos uh new stuff that you showed off there or what was the crowd favorite 
So uh, I saw some people Teenage Mutant people. Ninja Turtles, Larry. And it was always by request. And uh, <laughs> it went over really no, well. Wasn't. So we uh, people come in knowing that one, so they ask for it. But uh, we played a little bit of the Batman. We did the, the Batmobile chase. But uh, we had two different rooms set up. We had the upstairs room, which is where we were most of the time, and then the JVC room downstairs. And on Saturday, we shut down the main room uh, early, and went downstairs and I walk in, there's like 50 people waiting because I told them I'd be down there. And, uh, we started with the Batman and had uh, a 5.2.2 system down there with two SB16s in this small ballroom. So it was uh, pretty intense. And then you did a great job setting that up. It really worked. It, that was probably my favorite room. sound in the show. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a really fun room. And the, the crowd was awesome. We got to meet a lot of people and uh, took some photos. I got to meet uh, the youth man, Michael, first time in person. So that was fun, too. And we had some good food. and uh, Audioholics really were there, yeah. uh, part-time audiophile, and everybody was very supportive of, uh, of our displays. Yeah, this is a, well, this is a good time. Um, I'm, I'm sorry I missed it. I know this is going to be a yearly uh, event for them, so I, I really hope they come back strong next year, and, and I'll be super excited, and, and hopefully we'll be able to do a remote bar broadcast from there. I think that'll be a lot of fun. I promise um, you I won't drive there if I go. <laughs> but on that note, uh, our next happy hour, I know I typically announce that towards the end of the show, will actually be a, uh, a little bit different than our, our typical format because we're going to be at an event. Um, you know, this is a sort of event that we've uh we've done these consumer events in the past at some of our dealers um you know we we affectionately we were known them. for that and then COVID happened it was a, such a bummer that was our first uh dabbling with uh, facebook live was just to sort of go live from these events with no heads up at all and just sort of you know have some fun live stream from these uh you know these events where there was q and a's going on and, and gary and larry and i were doing presentations of different um experience zones uh, so we're bringing those back and we're actually going to combine our happy hour with uh, what we're calling speakers and subwoofers unleashed. Uh, and where's that going to be, Larry? I know you got a, a trip going there tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going to go hang out with the guys tomorrow and uh, say what's up. But it is going to be at the Nebraska Furniture Mart store in the Colony, which is part of the Dallas Fort Worth area. And we are going to demo the. And that is the biggest store I've ever been in. Yeah, this Offic is. I'll make it official. Single, yeah, probably the single largest retailer in the country, just as far as a single store. Uh, and it, it's just a fantastic store. I stay all the time, but they're probably the single best execution of home electronics and home furnishings in the country. It's a, it's a really great store. And we're going to take you guys for some really good food uh, while you're here, too. So uh, I'm Is that true? Oh, yeah. Ooh, I can't wait for that. But we'll be doing our giveaways. It'll be different. We're not going to be sitting around in front of the camera. I'll be sort of roving around. We're going to do a little tour of the store. Uh, then we'll have sort of a formal presentation and uh, we'll work out all the details. But that'll be uh, in two weeks on September 15th, one hour later, 7 p.m. Eastern time, 6 p.m. Central time uh, in Dallas at Nebraska Furniture Mart. So uh, we'll announce it all the ways we normally announce these live streams, but uh, we're, we're going to have a lot of fun there. And if you are in the Dallas area, you can RSVP uh, on our Eventbrite page. You'll also see the event on our Facebook page. Get all the details of uh, where the store location is uh, and what we're having for giveaways. And, and actually, we're giving away a $7,100 home theater that includes a 75-inch OLED, a AV receiver, and a 5.1.2 SVS speaker system. So if you are in the area, or even if you're a little outside the area, it may be worth heading in uh, to hear all the demos, to you know, potentially win that massive system and then some other uh, smaller prizes that we're giving away as well. So uh, look out for details on our social as we get a little bit closer to that, but very exciting to do uh, that event. Um, and then I think we'll talk about Cedia as we get a little bit closer, but another event we're doing in uh, the near future as well. Uh, well, that's it. I mean, that, I, I know you want to, and I want to get to Roey. I, it's gr really great that he's doing this, but I do, I, I do think it's worth bring, pointing out we're, we're going to be on the main uh, show floor of Cedia, and we're going to be in Central Hall at Las Vegas, Las Vegas uh, Convention Center, LVCC, in, um, it, for CES. So these are first times we've done the main halls of both of these um, very important trade shows. So anyone who is uh, in the trade that's on our on our broadcast, hope we can see you in Dallas for Cedia, which is at the end of September, and uh, Vegas for CES, which is at the beginning of January. It's so exciting to be back in person meeting people again. It's, it's something we all, all of us have missed. 
Absolutely. Uh, well, before I give uh, our guest a chance to come on here, I did want to do one giveaway. We'll save the 2.1 for uh, sort of a little bit away from now, but our first giveaway is going Yep, for Rowie. It's going to be a PB1000 Pro subwoofer. Our award-winning ported subwoofer goes to Tim Ortiz. Congratulations, Tim Ortiz. Awesome. Congrats. Yeah, Tim. Info, and you got a sub. So, uh, little intro here. Rowie is a second-time guest, but uh, he's a, a very talented individual who's currently the VP at Capital. Hey, there you are, Capital <laughs> Studios. He's also worked on the Conan O'Brien show. And, uh, you know, he's just an overall talented dude who's involved with a lot of things that uh, I didn't know about until I stalked his IMBD page a little bit. So, uh, Rowie, how are you doing tonight? Hey, gang. Good to hey, see Rowie. you all. Thanks for having me back. Thanks for it's coming. Nice back. to see you uh, digitally. I saw some of you in person uh, not too long ago. In yeah. Long Beach. Uh, Rowie the, came uh, out to the home entertainment show, and, and usually you go out to CES too, am I right? I do go to CES. Uh, I went to the one right before the pandemic and uh, have barely left the house since then. And and going out to uh, the show uh, where I saw you guys, the home entertainment show, uh, was was a big outing for me. And it was just so great to see you all again and just everybody back out and doing what they do and getting to talk to people about, you know, why they were there and what they were there for. It's just... Uh, you know, it's a great it's a great community that we're all we're all a part of. So it's it's uh, great to see everybody and catch up again. Yeah. Larry, are you in Dallas? Yes, I I am. Uh, well, I'm in Arlington, so I'm right between Dallas. And oh, okay. So I get uh, my in laws are Dallas, so I get out there mm -hmm. uh, a good little bit. So you're gonna have to let me know again the name of that of that place, so I make a a point of hitting it up next time I'm out. Absolutely, there. yeah. We'll send you there. Well, I know you're always into uh, interesting listening material, Roy. So I'm curious if you have any recommendations for the community uh, based on recent experiences. Um, I heard somebody mention Muse earlier, which I've definitely been meaning to check out. The I think on the, you know, no apologies here because uh, Gary, we don't make apologies for uh, listening <laughs> to Taylor Swift. But the um, the new Beyonce record is amazing um it's super super fun also texturally it's 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 actually really interesting it's not just a pop record it is an amazing dance record but it takes some real turns um i think that's been the biggest uh probably the biggest one on repeat in my household and there's always just a lot of uh, yes bob beyonce really don't get don't get snippy with me, Bob, in the chat. Yeah, that's right. Um, and uh, what else? A lot of jazz. I've been cleaning a lot of records lately, so I tend to buy uh, um, new or sealed records and then wash them on this uh, VPI Cyclone, which is like a wet vac. Um, I have a VPI I have, too. I have the. Yeah, it, I think I have the cheaper one. I have the sixteen point five. Um, I just tried. I, Instagram got me uh as they do with some ultrasonic one that wasn't horribly expensive so i'll let you know how that works Great. out but i'm about to try a a uh an ultrasonic cleaner too but what jazz as a rule, do you listen to roey what jazz that? do you listen to you said you were listening to some jazz what jazz do you i'm just curious i'm um, a jazz my, guy too. my big ones are like oscar peterson oscar peterson trio bill evans um joe pass uh yeah, I mean, those are like the big, those are the biggest ones for me. And then I've got a big, you know, Blue Note, Pablo, uh, Savoy, Verve, you know, I, I, I'm i everywhere. I don't get too... Uh, you like the chill or jazz? I like the chill. I also like the funky. Um, Herbie Hancock, Ron is asking about. Yeah, I've got some Herbie Hancock for sure. Um, I do like... I do like things funky, but when they get like too avant-garde and, and out there or what I call squeak squonk, um, <laughs> it loses, it loses me. But, um, yeah, that's the jazz. And I don't know. I got, I have a huge rock collection too. I'm, I'm, I'm everywhere. You're a music nerd. So I've I'm been all nerd. about, I'm definitely a nerd. <laughs> 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 i've been all about trying different genres of music just like random playlists and i, I found this bossa nova playlist on cobas and and i think i'm becoming a bossa nova fan i can't name Great. a single artist but i kind of like the uh you know up tempo and sort of the fun of it so uh there you go you got any bossa nova ref uh recommendations I'm, I'm happy to hear them 
Oh, for sure. Um, you know, it's funny is there's a, uh, what, what were you saying? No, I'm just surprised. I was hoping that you'd have one. I <laughs> yeah, just threw that one around. around like eight bands. <laughs> well, you know, uh, is it Bossa Nova? I wonder. The, the Jobim um, Sinatra record is like one of the saddest uh, records I've ever heard that I think is really, really terrific. Um, yeah, Sergio Mendez, somebody mentioned in, in the in the chat as well. Um, there's a there's a uh, just to talk uh, on vinyl. So uh, Lisa, my wife, who's from Dallas, has brought back a bunch of her records um, from hers when she was a kid. Lisa's pretty families. famous in her own life. In her own right, you should say who it is. Uh, Lisa Loeb, singer songwriter. Uh, Lisa Loeb. Um, Amazingly uh, talented person. That's right. And so she brought back a bunch of her uh, records from from uh, Dallas. And I went through them and there were some pretty choice uh, records in there. And uh, like some, some some Beatles, you know, very clean, a, a Mobile Fidelity, uh, uh, Abbey Road, and uh, wow. just some great stuff. But what I also found was there are these records that I have. And then she has her copy, and then I would go to Jersey and to my dad's collection and steal his records. And so there are these great, um, now we have like three different pressings of Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon, or um, uh, that's what got me on this tangent, was uh, um, uh, Gilberto Getz's uh, record, where I, I have like the reissue I just bought, then probably what was Lisa's dad's copy, and then you know my dad's copy from the '60s in Israel. And uh, being a true nerd, Gary, as you've uh, outed me, you know, I put all of them on the record washer, and then we sit and we listen to all three copies. She had a ton of Led Zeppelin that sounds really great. Um, yeah, so you know. are in the best shape. It's not, you know, it sounds three. like you know. I'm sorry, but you've you've, and I'm I am. You may not be a music nerd. I definitely am one. Um, but uh, let me ask you because you're a, you're a, you're a music safe space exactly. You're a music guy, but you're obviously uh, an inc incredibly accomplished sound guy, uh, a person who understands sound uh, at the very almost molecular level. I think. What are what do you think from the '60s and '70s are the best sounding jazz recordings? Or maybe you can even say you know maybe open it up beyond jazz. Yeah. So, all right, so, man, the chat is blowing up, but I just yeah. saw... Was Don't get distracted, Cheryl, I know. It's Cheryl hard. asking, no, it's on this topic. So Cheryl says, <laughs> Cheryl Scott, or Sh Cheryl Schott, forgive me, Cheryl, um, is asking about Bill Evans. And uh, the Bill Evans um, Live at the Village Vanguard, I think, is like one of the most brilliant performances, but also incredibly well captured. Um, and so I have, you know, the, the Melba Fidelity version, a Riverside version, you know, it's so fun to obsess over those, but the Bill Evans, um, uh, uh, live at the village Vanguard or, or Sunday at the village Vanguard, I think it's called, I think is one of, one of my favorites. Um, also my buddy, Joe Harley, who is the tone poet for Blue Note has been in charge of, um, doing all of Blue Note's reissues now, and they're doing an amazing job of doing direct all analog transfers right from the original tapes um, and cutting vinyl, uh, which he does with um, uh, Kevin Gray at Coherent, and they do a really phenomenal job of uh, the reissues of some of your favorite uh, uh, jazz records from Blue Note. Um, and they're tremendous. And I think that there's so much um, thought about about uh, original pressings, like I'm a big fan, but, you know, some of these reissues are absolutely outstanding. And just like, you know, gear, uh, it, you know, the older vintage gear isn't necessarily always the best way to go. And oftentimes the original pressings, depending on when they were pressed or where they were pressed or who did the mastering? A lot of times now you find um, really amazing quality um, and and uh, just great great pressings and great sounding records. I I love. Uh, you, are you saying down. the original ones? 
Well, I'm saying that the, the reissues today can be better than the originals, uh, no question. Uh, yes, Acoustic Sounds, uh, John mentions, is doing a great job. So there's really great stuff out there. And, and uh, being a nerd and getting to compare is great. But for me, um, also, you know, a lot of people talk about how much they love the warmth of records and, and stuff. When I, when I put my needle, my stylus down, and I hear silence before the music starts, for me, that's um, the greatest joy uh, of all, is getting a really silent record with a low noise floor and really being able to appreciate um, that, that, the quality. That's why I often avoid uh, you, buying used records, because you, you don't know what you get and, yeah. and uh, you might regret it, as I've done a couple of times. So I do have to flash this question up here because it's from my mom and she has a record player turned to her. She wants to know, does she need to have a record washer? Is she missing out? She's got a bunch of old 70s vinyl that she listens to. Is, is that going to sound better if she gets a record washer? Uh, no, just give your records to Gary and he'll wash them for you. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I, I actually, I'm going I'm to say that uh, I, I was talked into it by our friends at uh, Music Direct. Um, uh, and, Great people uh, at Music Direct. Yeah, and 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 you know, um, it really makes a difference if you have yeah. a lot of older stuff. It really kind of gets into those grooves. It, they work really well. It's it's part of my ritual now that I yeah. I, I wash it, and um, it, you know they all the good ones come with a little vacuum cleaner that vacuums the what, you know what you use to wash it. And um, yeah, I would tell your mind, it's not cheap. I mean, it's probably going to cost for a, a reasonable one four or five hundred bucks, but I yeah, would say it's not. worth it. Um, I just want to shout out real quick. Uh, who was it? Gary uh, in the chat saying uh, the Oscar Peterson. We get uh, we take requests. That is one of the greatest records. Uh, and uh, there's an acoustic sound new reissue of it. I'm going to be uh, acquiring. I love that record. I highly recommend it. Um, and yes, Gary, the the wet vac uh, record cleaners I think make all the difference in the world. I use them as a ritual as well and then put them in a new poly sleeve. Um, yeah, I do that too. I discard the sleeve that they came in, which sometimes is sad because oftentimes they come in really nice sleeves. But um, but even on new records, I find it incredibly important to wash records because you know um, these records are made in manufacturing plants where there's dirt and dust and people and things. And this is not like um, when CDs are made in these hermetically sealed environments. Uh, this is like a mechanical uh, steampunk uh, <laughs> mechanism, and there's a lot of dirt and grit and stuff that can get there, even on new records. So you know, wash your records. And so you can see you answer. can see even when you when you play a, a a disc, you can kind of see the static electricity drawing the dust to it. So so uh, totally. there's no doubt that that uh, you know even after one or two listenings, you'll you'll get oh, yeah. a benefit. And I use, you know, the D-Stat fan and, and, and at least at least getting that brush to go over the surface. Um, but, you know, do you, do you need one? I think the question is, are you going to appreciate the difference? Or, you know, that's, that, that is the slope, right? That's the question about all this audiophile business. And the, sure. The, um, I don't use the anti-static gun, Ray. I, I have that, but I use something called a... It's a fan from DSTAT. I'm sure I bought it from Music Direct. I don't know if they still make it, but it's this funny handheld fan with a motor in it that essentially does what the uh, gun does, and you wave it like a wizard or, or, a, or vermouth over a, a martini. You wave it <laughs> over the record slowly, and it takes the static out of the, the record, and then I hold it um, over the, style, the needle as well. Well, arm. that is the, that's the most vinyl talk we've ever done, Gary, and, and I, I'm I'm sure a lot of people learned a lot there. Um, but if I may, I want to take us in a uh, deviate about as far away from that as I possibly could. <laughs> you're the vinyl, you know, you're the vinyl guy, Nick. I'm the one that told you it's not even a thing, but but uh, it's I still thing. enjoy it as a as as a hobby and I, a passion. I knocked oh, this one off nice. my wall earlier today, so my you can probably see some of it, but some, my whole wall is covered with vinyl. And I knocked this one off the wall today, uh, listening to Muse. So I just have excited. some hard hitting question, hard hitting questions for Rowie that I want to get to, and uh, we'll get to your giveaway in a minute because I know you're excited about that. But this one I, I have to hear. Best I just learned. I just, lear I just, 
I just read a comment. I, I just learned that I don't think I want vinyl. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I mean, oh, listen, department. a lot of times, you know, a lot of times people start asking me, you know, about, about getting, getting gear and do they need this and do they, you know, look, uh, if you're going to appreciate it, yes, but just know that uh, the farther you go down this rabbit hole, you know, it, it might make you miserable and you can drive yourself crazy too, which to me is very often what happens. You, yeah. You know, you, it's the, we torment ourselves over this. If you want perfection, you know, it's very easy to, to go digital and, and have it be really simple, but there's something about it, you know, being analog, not a, not a digital representation of music, but an actual analog signal. And there's so much room for uh, imperfection and things to go wrong that the more you can steer them right into a way that really satisfies you, I think it's really terrific, uh, yeah, you know, absolutely. and if you enjoy it, it's only if you enjoy it. Yeah, Bill, I have a VPI too. They make great, great turntables. Um, yeah. So getting to my question, I, I have played the game Grand Theft Auto 4 for oh, more yeah. hours than I, than I like <laughs> to admit. Um, and you actually on your IMB, do you have two audio credits? You're for saying a that wrong. You've done that twice now. You're saying IMBD. <clears throat> I am, oh, sorry. Internet I am database. Yeah. All right. My B. My B. How about that? <laughs> my B. Well, I got GTA 4 right. I got that part right. But uh, you have two credits there a Hasidic, Hasidic pedestrian and a subway announcer. And yeah. I'm just curious what that process is like for, for getting your voice mixed into a, a video game like that. And uh, have you actually killed yourself in the game? I'm, I'm very curious. I will tell that. you. I will tell you gladly. Is my video cutting out because it's skipping out? No, you're good. End. No, you look good. You're okay, good. good. You're okay. Great. Do I look good? Tell me more. Um, so let me tell you about Grand Theft. Grand Theft Auto, you see, uh, in my day. Um, so I was working at Conan and a uh, bunch of nerds. And every now and again, the Conan staff and the Saturday Night Live uh, staff would get or, or cast would get in, in, invited to these uh, video game demos where they would get like a lounge at a swanky hotel and we would all just get to play video games usually it was the debut of a game and they would give us uh, uh the video game on the way out and it was call of duty and grand theft auto and we met these people and we played grand theft auto 3 i guess and got to know the people behind the game so that when they started casting grand theft auto 4 they reached out to casting at conan who then brought a bunch of the people over who were um, doing voiceovers on the show. And I'd been lucky enough to get to do a thing or two here, uh, here and there, not a lot, but also was a nerd. And so got brought in to do voices for Grand Theft Auto 4. And basically that's how it happened. And the way it went down is you go into the room and you meet with the dude and the dude's got 50 characters that he needs to get done by the end of the day and he just kind of looks at you talks to you for a minute looks and he go he looked at me and he was like uh, i don't know hasidic dude on this you know <laughs> okay sure that's a stretch and so uh you know it, there was a bunch of lines so in the game when you drive around um one of the neighborhoods there's a bunch of hasidic dudes and so uh i'm one of those guys uh, I think in the subway, you know, it's like, keep your arms and legs inside. And, uh, you know, I'm sure there's a violent <laughs> slam on it and it got distorted. And then I know, and this is the one I heard, cause I think it's on YouTube. If you drive around while you drive around in the game, there's like a few different radio stations. And on one of them, there's like a shock jock morning zoo type of DJ. And that's, mm -hmm. and that's me. Um, so that's how we got to now. do it. And most importantly, we all got Grand Theft Auto 4 for free. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I spent a lot of time <laughs> playing that game. I wasn't really about the missions. I just like to steal the um, whatever like the massive construction truck was, because mm -hmm. then you could just drive through uh, any bear. Yeah. So, you know, it was just chaos in my 20s. Oh, I love that. It was a long well, time ago, but exactly what i hoped it would be about so great yeah. there but digging back uh, a little bit into your history as well uh, on the conan show i know you uh 
you were a music uh, segment producer and you got to meet with a lot of musicians. And one of those was Kanye and he's sort of this bigger than life personality. I'm just curious if there was any experiences you had there that are worth sharing. Yeah, Kanye came on, I, I want to say for the 808s and Heartbreak uh, record, I think. Um, and the reason that that performance is memorable to me is because he was coming right out of you know, homecoming and late registration and all these like super dancey records um, and fun and upbeat ones to what was a more heartfelt one, right? Um, and we had to rent some crazy lighting. Like he, he or his production guy had to have some lighting on set. And it was, you know, we never really did that kind of thing and spent, you know, $10,000 renting lights for this one performance, which was unusual at the time. This was the 1230 late night show on NBC. Uh, and then Kanye had flown in from Japan like that morning, slept through rehearsal. Um, I don't fault him. And then they woke him up and I think like had a hard time waking him up, woke him up for the performance. He does the performance and like he was sleepy. The, it was really not Kanye at his best. And so we released the audience and then he came out and did the song like another time or two and then the, the the reason it got hairy was he started giving direction because he's Kanye and he's an incredibly, you know, interesting artist and very ha hands on and very concerned with his, you know, very sure concerned with his image and how he's portrayed. And he started directing. And I remember just having this moment going, if he starts getting into camera shots, we're going to be here all day and we have to deliver the show right in a few minutes because these shows are live to tape. Um, Thankfully, he was happy with his own take. We only shot it two more times. Um, but still, when I would watch back that performance, and, and I'm sure it's on YouTube, you can still kind of hear that, like, he's sleepy. He's half asleep. Mm. Like, I felt like we didn't get all the energy that Kanye would have liked to have given because the poor guy just got off a, a, a you know, I'm sure yeah, a nap private time. jet from Japan. Or, yeah. yeah, it was nap time. Yeah. If you've ever made that flight from Japan, it's a rough one. And, you know, no. nowadays we know about scheduling artists and sleep math and all that kind of stuff. But at the time, uh, yeah, we got sleepy Kanye, unfortunately. <laughs> sleepy, well, sleepy A. I, I do want to ask you about Atmos, but are, are you ready for your giveaway? <laughs> oh, I'm ready and, and pumped and excited. And thank you for letting me do a giveaway. I uh, was so thrilled that you guys asked me to come back and do this again. And really the one condition for me was I want to be the one, I want to <laughs> be able to do one of the giveaways. So. It's not just a normal giveaway. It's an amped up giveaway that, that uh, Gary basically tripled the value of. So this is a big one. We souped it up. So this is a two, 2.1. Uh, yep. Prime 1 satellite. 2. Prime 1 satellite. SP 1000 subwoofer. All right. Well, I'm very, very pleased to say that the, Prime Satellite 2.1 souped up giveaway winner is none other than <laughs> Dale Kohler. Congratulations, Dale. Oh, congrats. It's yours, the 2.1. Way Whoa, to go. We, we might just have to bring you back for every episode and you can just do the giveaways. What do you think about I that? Would I, I, that? I would love that. I would love voice it. Our, our oh. voiceover giveaway person. You can introduce you know. all the giveaways. You can do it in a fun voice. That's so, right. Yeah, I mean, we'll do we'll do characters uh, a la Grand Theft Auto all over again. Ah, oh, see that that's just a dream come through. So I know you've uh, you've got Prime Elevations. You're big into Dolby Atmos in your own personal system, and, and I know that sort right. of dovetailed into some of the work you've done uh, at Capital as well. So maybe you could just talk about sort of your journey there and, and what maybe we can expect from Atmos down the road. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's all it's all exciting. I was uh, I got really into Atmos at home. Uh, and built a growing Atmos home theater. And that's one of the great things about it is you can start modest and continue to add speakers, right? And have better uh, spatial resolution, if you will. Um, and so I was, I was into it at home when you could only play back Atmos for movies off of Blu-ray discs. Uh, and then Apple TV and streaming got involved. That was super exciting. And that's when I met with, uh, UMG, who was um, pushing forward on music in uh, Atmos Music, and they were doing it out of Capital. And lo and behold, I, I ended up landing um, at Capital Studios, 
the hub or the the home of of um, Dolby Atmos music mixing, and certainly the first uh, mixing room that was purpose built for uh, Atmos music as opposed to Atmos theatrically. Um, so really great, super exciting place to be. Uh, you know, there for six, seven, eight months, and then the pandemic hit. Uh, and then, you know, chaos, remote mixing, what are we doing? I'm, a, I'm listening to mixes at home in my home theater. It's just like, it felt very, um, it felt very sort of guerrilla as much as it was um, professional because we were pushing so hard to make sure that this happened and happened, um, you know, that mixes were, were meeting uh, the standard uh, of quality that we set um, and all that during a pandemic. And I think we did it successfully. And I know we did because um, we're happy with uh, what we were able to achieve, which at the time, and I think we spoke uh, about this was maybe just on title uh, or Atmos was Atmos was available at first, you know, just on Amazon's Echo Studio and then title. And then since we last spoke, we now have uh, Amazon streaming uh, Atmos music everywhere, including on your phone. Uh, you can hear it in headphones. Um, Tidal as well uh, on the Apple TV and on the app. But, you know, what made a huge, huge impact, of course, was Apple music getting into the Atmos lane. And so um, Really, the world woke up to what we've been doing um, for five years, I guess, before then. So, you know, so including before I came along at Capital. Um, and it's this really unbelievable um, moment, I think, of, of, you know, I'd say success, but we're still pushing forward. I mean, I think that there's still a lot of exciting to do, uh, stuff to do, and we have. Um, people who are at home and can now appreciate um, Atmos music uh, in their homes, in their home theaters, on sound bars, in headphones, and now uh, the next, you know, the next evolution of that, it has already started to hit um, cars. And I think that that is going to be really impactful for listeners, for so many of us who are in our cars to be able to uh, appreciate, um, you know, to get that studio experience in the vehicle um, and in other places as well. I think it's gonna be a really big deal. Yeah, so that, that'll bring you know, a ton of awareness and, can, and I think excitement. I wanna ask Roy about the process. Do you go back to the um, the 16 track master and just yeah. remix it for, is that, how, is that how you do it? So the most, um, the there's there's so many ways it happens based on what's available and what the assets are right so uh, a lot of times getting um, post mix stems uh, f to the engineer is oftentimes the best way to proceed um, especially with more contemporary music you go back you might be working for multis that need to be that need to have some recreation uh, done or plugins put back in or effects that were done in the mixing process. Uh, but all we have now is a stereo master. So then we'd want to go back to the multis um, and having the ability to have those different uh, instruments or elements separated out oftentimes will yield a better result where you can hear each element more discreetly. Now, what you don't want to end up doing and and unfortunately, I've I've heard, not from us, but you know, other mixes that are that are out and exist, is a lot of times the instinct is to say, well, this is Atmos, and I have 20 speakers, so I'm going to put you know one instrument here, one there, the vocal up there, the thing over there, the saxophone there, and now I've got a different instrument in every speaker, so that's Atmos, and then you you hit play, and you're just it's just everything is everywhere, Awful, and, yeah. and, and I, who I cares, you know, those, yeah. yeah, and that's not really. The goal, the goal is to stay true to the intent, the creative intent of the artist. And, um, you know, did they take really big swings in stereo or was it more conservative a mix? In which case I'm not really, it wouldn't be appropriate to have everything flying out of everywhere. So um, 
how do you stay true to the original intent, but also create an immersive experience in Atmos that is, um, dare I say, better than. Um, in other words, it has to have a purpose for existing. Because if you're too conservative on the mix, um, and it just sounds like stereo, then what's the point of calling it Atmos? Um, you're not really partaking in the strengths that the format allows you to, to enjoy. And if you're just ripping shit apart and putting it everywhere, sorry, I don't know if it's okay to swear. That's um, okay. You know, you're losing the groove and then who cares? So uh, this is why talented um, engineers and mixers and creatives and everyone has to be a part of this process. There's certainly been some, oh, I don't know, confusion or misnomers uh, in the early days where there were some naysayers saying, oh, you know, uh, UMG sends, just sends stereo masters to Dolby who process it. Man, um, that couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, there is an incredible amount of care uh, that goes into the process of creating a, a successful Atmos mix. And I'm incredibly proud of the work that the team uh, at Capital and at UMG have done. It's really, really terrific. Uh, There's stuff. a lot more, a lot more coming. And, and you've done a, a phenomenal job uh, with the giveaways here. So I'm going to invite you to do another one. If you want to look in the chat, we're due. And then I know you have a technical question. So <laughs> I want to you to take off on the lightning face. round with Ed. If you're willing to stick around another <laughs> nine or so minutes, uh, but we got a giveaway there in the chat, and uh, you know, do we have a hard out, or we have a hard out at six? Usually, we we're we're pretty punctual there. Okay, yeah. I think you guys are. Are you guys? This might be crazy, but you might be up against the new Lord of the Rings TV show. I don't stand on the East Coast, either. which is counter programming to Lord of the Rings. I'm super. We're gonna be. For that. We're gonna crush Lord of the Rings. Yeah, like there's the no ball, right? chance that it ever gets as many streams as this. I they just they got a billion that. dollar budget, but we got we got Rowie and we got we Gary. have Rowie. That's All right, right. well. Um, but let's, then let's I couldn't be away. more thrilled to do a giveaway, which is a PB1000 Pro subwoofer. Hey, Ed. Hey, Rowie. How are Ed, you? Ed, you're right on time for this giveaway. It's good to see you. <laughs> and you as well. Hi, Ed. Uh, oh, good. Ed's here for the tech question. I do have a tech question. Um, so we're going to give this PB1000 Pro subwoofer away to none other than... Peter Riboto. Peter, congratulations. It's yours. Nice you roll did it, on Peter. That, R, yeah, that was yeah. a nice rolled R. That's very, Ribot very good. Suspe That's he built good. suspense well, too. And we could take notes from Roy. Roy, would you mind coming on future shows just for the giveaways? I, I'm all in. Let's do it. She's going to come to Dallas with us and hang out at NFM in two weeks. So I didn't even get to ask you some of my uh, other questions, but I did want you to get your technical question in front of Ed because yeah. I think this could actually benefit more people than uh, me asking about, you know, family listening preferences and stuff. So uh, shoot it away. Let, let's hear what Hi, I said. Hi, Ed. Um, good to see you. Thank you yeah, for taking same, the time. Really. And hopefully the folks uh, who are <laughs> listening and watching and in the chat might, uh, might learn a thing or two like I'm about to. Uh, here's my question, Ed. Why am I... Why am I <laughs> I'm I'm getting into this uh, not, not radio making, DJ you're voice. You're making me nervous now. You're going to oh, throw me short of time. No, here's my question. So it's about multiple subs. So I have a two-channel system, which you know uh, had uh, electrostatic speakers and um, uh, what is it? The three thousands um, that we added to the electrostatics. Um, but because I am what we call a tinkerer, and I'm always moving things around. My stereo system right now, I have some PMC speakers in there uh, on loan, which are outstanding. And what I was toying with was the idea of taking those two subs and adding them to my home theater, which already has two SB16s. Yeah. So, so I have a I have a 914 system or you might call it 924 but i'm going to say it's 914 because it's two subs right so i have two subs in the 914 that are sb16s could i add for more low end or more even low end or more boom boom on just theater just movies as opposed to music larry why are you laughing uh oh, is it crazy oh, because i've heard you don't want to mismatch your subs 
But what if I want to anyway, Ed? How would I do that? Well, Ed, over I, to you. I agree with you. It It's best to add more SB16 ultras, same frequency response, same phase response, same performance envelope. If you want to add SB3000s, at least they are sealed. Um, they are a high performance model. You're going to have a little bit of a different phase response from the SB3000s than the SB16s. So there might be a little bit of phase cancellation at certain frequencies. It's not the end of the world. It's We can certainly work around it. Uh, if you have a way to measure the frequency response in the room, we can see what introducing the two SB3000s would do to the combined response and then start noodling around with the phase control and some of the other DSP tools that we have in our menu. Uh, and, and I think we could do a, a successful integration, but I'd prefer if you had oh, SB16s. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah, you know, and I'd, I'd wondered, would it make sense to use maybe the 3000s for, you know, music, uh, for, you know, more in a bass management uh, uh, setting, uh, or and just the 16s for theater. But, you know, the important thing here is, and because uh, somebody asked in the chat, why? in God's name, what I need to do that. The answer is I don't need to do that. I'm out of my mind. I'm out of my mind and I'm a tinkerer. And sometimes <laughs> you just go, you know, it's Sunday and I'm kind of bored and I wonder what would happen if I did this. Uh, yeah. And so sometimes we can't help ourselves. And that's the joy of, uh, of all of this. And, you know, did I need to get a, uh, a new DAC for my two channel system? Uh, no, I didn't need to. I wanted to because, uh, you know, I'm what my people call abyssal meshuggah. And it's that kind of talk that gets you cast as a as a Hasidic, uh, you know, subway <laughs> rider in Grand Theft Auto 4 because we're just abyssal meshuggah. Yeah. So I, I really want to ask this question. I know we're, we're getting short on time and I'm going to have you do the last giveaway. You're sticking around. You're doing the last giveaway. So it's in the chat. Is there. That okay. We'll, we'll hold off on that for a minute. I but I did want to ask, is it okay? You is this, it okay? You have this phenomenal worldview and, um, you know, especially with the world of audio. And I'm just curious what, what you think our industry could do better to elevate itself and just, um, you know, reach more people in a way that really keeps yeah. them engaged and gets them to desire and aspire to own, you know, this kind of equipment. You know, it, it is, it is, that is such a great, a great uh, question. And I think the question, right, which is how, how do you, how do you get people to care about something that they otherwise might not know that they should and do care about, right? Um, and for me, I think the only, the only way forward there is to convey, and I'm not a marketing genius, but I think that folks need to appreciate that there is a quality experience that they can participate in and enjoy that will be meaningful to them um, in a truly connective way, be it with music or with, um, with uh, you know, cinema and, and video and, and movies and TV. Um, I, really, I really feel that elevating your experience right and for the purposes of this conversation we're talking about by way of the equipment um it really can bring you closer and and give you a better a better and and real way of of connecting with what it is that you are trying to experience so if you're watching you know a movie on your ipad with um you know shitty headphones you know, this might not be for you, um, but for, you know, the, the difference that it makes. And I think people do value like, oh, I've got a I've got a 46 inch TV, man. I went out and got a 65 and it kicks ass because they just wanted the bigger thing. But, you know, when you get there, there is something that makes it easier to connect to. Right. Just screen size alone. Now imagine that with sound, you know, what happens when you add speakers to your really crappy TV speakers. Well, a sound bar completely changes that experience. And a pair of speakers, even more so. And what happens when you add a sub to your system? Well, I don't need that, that's just noise. Really? Well, that's gonna give you really the, the, the momentum, the, the chest thump, the, the uh, kinetic experience of being able to connect more deeply and richly to what it is you are listening to. 
Now let's talk about what adding a sub allows the rest of your speakers to do and allows them to perform um, with greater excellence. So um, I'm, I'm blathering here, but how do we get people to do that? For me, I think the answer is letting them know that there's a premium experience that they can enjoy. And, you know, the proof is in the pudding. It's all about ABs. It's all about getting people um, to really to feel it. And, and a lot of times for me, there's nothing more convincing than an AB. I love an AB. I love putting myself in a situation where I go, what you just said to me makes no sense, but I'm here and I want to hear it. And um, <laughs> the kind of shows where I see you guys at where people go, you know, Garth Powell from AudioQuest, who's like talking about, you know, changing your AC plug and then sitting with him and going, holy shit, if I change this one component in my system, everything gets better. Everything. There's a 15% appreciation level that I can now add by changing one cable on my system. And, um, and that's true for every component in every system. So, so, you know, everybody should get in and get a taste and realize that they can do better. And the other half of that is the problem is once you do, man, good luck stopping because, yep. you know, there's, thing. it's, yeah, it's a lifelong thing and there's always a little bit more to appreciate and to futz with and to tinker with. And uh, it's, it's the, you know, the art of appreciation and maybe insanity. Well, you're, you're a phenomenal evangelist for uh, this passion and this hobby. And, you know, I think uh, we need more people well, like you out there just sort of singing these, these kind of uh, points and, and really driving them home. So uh, before we get to the final giveaway, uh, which you're going to be gracious enough to share, I really appreciate that. I wanted to thank Roy, our, our second time guest, a friend of the show. Definitely look forward to having you back. I got so many more questions I didn't get to ask. But uh, uh, our next broadcast, as we mentioned earlier in the show, will be September 15th. We'll be broadcasting live from the Nebraska Furniture Mart in Dallas. It's going to be one hour later, so 7 p.m. Eastern time, 6 p.m. Central time. Uh, all the announcements will go out here over the next couple of weeks. Uh, but if you are in the area, you can RSVP on the Eventbrite. Uh, you can also learn about Roey's personal system on our website. He's got a featured artist where he did a little interview with us, has some pictures as well so you can see his personal home theater check that out um anything else from the rest of my team we share before Roey i just want to thank Roey. it's it's fun to hang out with Roey. it was really really good really informative and fun too. yeah it's fun for me so, too absolutely Anytime. so with that um, said we should do that last giveaway though take us let's, home let's do the last giveaway uh and again guys thanks so much for uh having me and including me it's really uh, a fun, fun thrill. I, I can talk about this stuff all day long. And honestly, I uh, usually do. So feel free to uh, you know, <laughs> hit, hit me up with questions and then I'll turn around and ask Ed. Uh, but if you're ever looking for, you know, more ways to, uh, oh man, somebody in the chat needs to go. All right. <laughs> our, our final, our final winner for the evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the winner of an SB2000 Pro with SoundPath RCA cable is Trevor White. Congratulations, Yay, Trevor. Trevor. Yeah, Trevor, you did it. The SB2000 <laughs> Pro with SoundPath <laughs> RCA cable is yours. Best giveaway well ever. Thank you, well everyone, done. for tuning in. Thank you, yeah, Rowie. Thank Ed, you. I know this is a brief. It wasn't quite a lightning round. It was like one quick strike there. But no uh, it's in your face. Uh, yeah, Gary, Larry, enjoy your company as always. And we'll see you all September 15th. Great Thanks hanging out, Rowie. You and, too. Uh,